You should have a box or crate containing the permacast column shaft and a separate box that contains the cap and base set. The Tuscan cap and base set box contains the flashing cap, the Tuscan cap and base, the column installation instructions, fasteners, and brackets. To install your permacast column, you'll need the following tools and supplies. Power tools you may not own can be rented. Before you begin, you will need to install temporary braces cut to the length of the existing column to support the structural beam. Be sure to nail or screw the tops of the temporary braces to the beam. The first step in the installation is to install the flashing cap in the desired location underneath the beam. It is important that the flashing cap be centered under the structural part of the beam and not under non-structural blocking. The bottom of the beam must be flush with or extend below the bottom edges of the trim boards covering the front and back faces of the beam. If the bottom of the beam is recessed up above the bottom edges of the trim boards, add blocking to the underside of the beam at the column location to make the bottom of the beam flush with the bottom edges of the front and back trim boards. If your flashing cap has the plumb fit feature, screw the eye hook into the center of the flashing cap. If it does not have the plumb fit feature, drive a screw into the center mark with the head of the screw protruding half of an inch. Take your plumb bob and drop it from the eye hook or screw down to within a quarter of an inch of the floor. If the Tuscan cap and base set has a template included as part of the box, position the center mark of the template under the tip of the plumb bob and trace around the outside of the template. If a template is not included, place a mark where the tip of the plumb bob meets the floor. This is the center point of the column shaft. Set the plumb bob aside and remove the eye hook or screw from the flashing cap. Take the Tuscan base and center it on the tracing or plumb bob mark you just made on the floor. Align the edge of the base to be parallel to the edge of the porch. Mark the base on the floor by tracing around it with a pencil. If your cap and base set did not come with a template, trace around the column shaft hole in the center to mark the column shaft location on the floor. Set the column base aside. To determine the height your column needs to be, Measure the distance from floor to beam from the front, back, left, and right positions around the column shaft tracing on the floor. Mark your measurements on the column and note the appropriate position. Rotate the column a quarter turn in between measurements. Draw a line to connect the four measurement points and follow the line when you cut the column to length with your circular saw. Sand the bottom of the column with a sanding block to ensure the column bears evenly on the floor surface. You will need to raise the support beam using the two 2x4s nailed together. Cut the 2x4s to fit between the hydraulic jack and the beam, and then use the jack to raise the beam approximately half of an inch. Take the Tuscan base and slide it onto the bottom of the column shaft. Temporarily tape or shim it approximately 24 inches up from the bottom of the shaft. Slide the Tuscan cap over the top of the column shaft and let it come to rest on the neck ring. You are now ready to install your column. Line the column up with the flashing cap underneath the beam. Make sure to keep the front, left, back, and right positions in the proper place. Slide the bottom of the column shaft into place, so the bottom edge of the column is aligned with the column shaft tracing on the floor. Ensure the cap is centered and release the jack so the beam now bears on the column. Remove the jack and double 2x4s and set them aside. Slide the Tuscan cap up to contact the beam and drill through it into the beam on both sides of the column with the 3 16th inch drill bit. Apply a bead of construction adhesive around the inside of the edge lip of the flashing cap. Push the Tuscan cap back into place until it slides into the flashing cap and using a number two Phillips driver bit, drive four of the long deck screws through the holes. Clean up any excess construction adhesive with a damp rag. Place the two aluminum brackets on the left and right sides of the column and mark the holes on the column and the floor. Use the 1 8 inch bit and drill holes in the column shaft where you made the marks. If you have a concrete floor, use the hammer drill and the 3 16 inch diameter masonry drill bit to drill the holes on the floor. Screw the mounting brackets to the concrete floor using the blue hex head Tapcon screws or attach to a wood floor by drilling pilot holes with the 1 8 inch bit and then using the 2 1⁄2 inch long wood screws. Screw the mounting brackets to the column shaft using the short Phillips head sheet metal screws. Apply a large bead of construction adhesive inside the line on the floor where you mark the base location. Align the perimeter of the base with the line you made on the floor and press the base into the adhesive. 
Caulk around the column shaft at the cap and base as needed, and caulk the countersunk screw holes in the cap. Clean up any excess caulk or construction adhesive with a damp rag. Remove the temporary braces that have been supporting the beam up till now. The column installation is complete. Your permacast column is now ready to be primed and painted.